In this example we have a river that's flowing at 12 meters cubed per second and is 3.83 meters wide. What we've been asked to do in the question is first plot the relationship between specific energy and flow depth and then if we assume the river is flowing at two meters deep use that relationship to work out what the flow regime is and what the alternative depth is. So a definition of specific energy is the flow depth plus the flow per unit width squared over 2g y squared and what we want to do in this question is plot values of specific energy versus values of y, the flow depth. So we can draw a table for several values of y, we can calculate values of specific energy and then we can plot that on this graph to see how that comes out. So let's do it for values of y going up in increments of 0.5 meters. So let's say y is 0.5, y is 1, y is 1.5, y is 2, and y is 2.5. What we now want to do is use this equation for specific energy to calculate what the specific energy is at these depths. So we have the y term to plug into the equation. We don't have the, q, the small q term, the flow per unit width, but we know that q, small q is big Q over the channel's width. So our flow per unit width is going to be the total flow divided by the width of the channel. So we're told in the question our total flow is 12 meters cubed per second. Our width is 3.83 meters and that gives us a Q, small q, of 3.133 meters squared per second. So that now just becomes a constant that we can plug into this equation. So the only thing varying as we do this calculation is the value of y. So if we plug q into this equation as 3.133 meters squared per second, and we enter different values of y, we get values for es of 2.5 at 0.5. At y equals 1, es is 1.5. At y is 1.5, es is 1.7. At y is 2, ES is 2.1, at Y is 2.5, ES is 2.6. So what we can now do is we can now plot these values up to see what the relationship is. So I've drawn out a, a plot here that's going to allow us to plot those values up. So at Y is 0.5, ES is 2.5, at Y is 1, ES is 1.5 at Y is 1.5 ES is 1.7 at Y is 2 ES is 2.1 and at Y is 2.5 ES is 2.6 So I've just plotted up these different values that we've calculated for the, the relationship between y and our specific energy. And what we can then do is just draw a line linking each one of these so we can just assume a kind of linear relationship between each point. Come up with a, a curve. And what we can see is our standard specific energy curve that loops round, we have our minimum specific energy at our critical flow depth and we have the curve that tells us that we have two possible flow depths at every value of specific energy. So for any value of specific energy we have two possible flow depths apart from at the critical flow depth where we only have one possibility. So from this graph we can see straight away that our critical flow depth is one meter because that's the point where we have our minimum specific energy. So anything above that 
critical flow depth, that turning point is going to be subcritical. Anything below is going to be supercritical. So this is our relationship and we're told if we assume that y is 2 meters, what is the flow regime and what is the alternative flow depth. So let's say that y is 2 meters. So what we can see is that if y is 2 meters, we can draw a line across until it hits the graph and then from that point we can draw a line down we can see that if y is 2 meters our specific energy is going to be 2.1 meters and we can also see that our alternative flow depth the other possibility for our flow depth is going to be this value here. So the, the flow depth could also be 0.7 meters. So our first flow depth was two meters. That's what we were given in the question. The flow could also have an alternative flow depth at the same level of energy of 0.7 meters. So we're also asked in the question to comment on whether the flow is critical or supercritical. So we can see from the graph we've drawn out that it looks like the critical flow depth is one and our flow depth that we're given in the question is more than one. So it looks like it's going to be subcritical flow, but we can just prove that mathematically by using the equation for critical flow depth. So the equation for critical flow depth is cube root it's cube root of q squared over g. So it's going to be the cube root of a small q squared over gravity, which gives us a critical flow depth of one meter, which is exactly what we've proven by drawing the graph. So one meter is less than our flow depth, which is two meters. We're told in the question to assume it's two meters. So because our flow depth is greater than the critical flow depth, that means the flow is going to be sub critical. So what we've done in this question is from a given discharge and width of channel, we've used the specific energy equation to calculate the value of specific energy at various flow depths. We've plotted that up to show the relationship between energy and flow depth for our river. We are thinking about what's happening when the flow depth is 2 meters, and we've shown that at 2 meter flow depth, for the same level of energy, the alternative flow depth would be 0.7 meters. We've also shown that our flow is subcritical because the flow depth is more than the critical flow depth. And if the flow was supercritical, the flow depth would be 0.7 meters.